Kitty has always had suspect behavior, and this whole time, it's been right in front of our face. Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I, I, we, we partied for my birthday before. You came to my party. You know? No, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? Eyes, mm. eyes, brother. Oh, man. Eyes, eyes. Because P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. Final question. Is there anything that you may want to confess tonight before you go in? I keep everything right here. Or right here. There you go. That's how you do now, it. Now, I know personally, this has been something that's well known in Hollywood. But whenever you would tell somebody they ain't got nothing to do with Hollywood or a part of any circle, they would always look at you like you're I mean, crazy. Yo, Diddy, you gave me the Ooshkosh Goofwash. You gave me the Ooshkosh Muaf. Let me read it. Let me read okay, it, read. Fifth. Oh, my God. Sorry I can no longer Just help you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are all now left under leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. Then the thieves in Peter's January. Oh, he did it. He did it. He did it. He did it. We segueing into the Drink Champs interview <laughs> when you was with Nori and Fab and Jada and mm -hmm. everybody. They made a compilation video with you because they said you were sounding real suspect mm. on, the, on the interview. But since yeah. singer Cassie filed a civil lawsuit, everything is out of the bag. And this led to a few people that have been associated with Diddy to take a fall whether this stuff is true or false. Pretty much, if you make a deal with a dude that has made a deal with the devil, well, that's just like making a deal with the devil. You can pretty much fall innocent or guilty just from being associated with this man. Explain why the lawsuit goes beyond Diddy and what's kind of at stake here. This along with Cassie's uh, lawsuit that you talked about earlier that was settled reads a lot like what we saw in the R. Kelly case in the EDNY where they're talking about this being a criminal enterprise that's all feeding towards this one individual's uh, depravity of wanting drugs and sex and rock and roll, roll and everything in between. We got victims who were speaking up but nobody wanted to hear him. I watched him fire the gun. I've said it all this time. And questions we used to ask, but now we know the answer. Are you attracted to men or women? It depends on my mood, my vibe. Maybe the first person to fall just from being associated with Diddy is Brooklyn rapper Sean. Not only the first, but he took the biggest fall thus far. 21-year-old Jamal Barrow, a lesser-known rapper and part of Combs' entourage at the dance club, was indicted by a grand jury on a slew of charges. One person was indicted for uh, attempted murder who was in the club um, and was involved in the In the club shooting at Club New York, where a few people got shot, including a woman in the face, this shooting reportedly occurred from an argument between Brooklyn goon Scar and Sean Puffy Combs. Witnesses said that Puffy, who was present with Hollywood star Jennifer Lopez, was making it rain, which angered Scar. After an argument ensued, gunfire was exchanged, which allegedly included Scar and one of his associates, as well as Shine and Diddy Combs. Rap mogul Sean Puffy Combs pleaded not guilty today to charges stemming from a nightclub shooting. Combs was arraigned on charges of criminal possession of a handgun. Though. How do you think the first on March 16, 2001, Combs beat the rap on charges stemming from the shootout in New York City. His protege, Jamal Shine Barrow, wasn't so lucky. Shine was sentenced to 10 years in prison for his role in the incident. How did Diddy escape this one? Before we get too far in this video, please do me a small favor. If you haven't yet, hit that like button and apply pressure to that subscribe button. Yes, apply pressure to that subscribe button. Those charges are related to a shooting at a Midtown nightclub last December that injured three people. Combs and his girlfriend Jennifer Lopez were stopped after leaving that club. Combs was arrested when police found a stolen gun in the front seat of his car. First, he got the best lawyers and cut ties between himself and Shine. Now, what's crazy about that is Shine already knew Diddy didn't like him. Look at what former bodyguard of Puff Daddy, Gene, had to say about that. Before they even went to jail, me and Puff stood in front of Trump Towers when he had Shine meet him. Shine got off the tour bus. Puff told me, yo, Gene, don't let nobody take a picture with me, take a picture with this nigga. He said, I hate this mother. This before they even, Shine even went to jail. Puffy then proceeded to bribe jury members and even got some of the witnesses to change their story. They had somebody on the jury that was willing to like make all that shit go away. You understand? 
though there was a witness that claimed to have seen Puffy with a gun. I don't have a publicity machine. I don't have a billion dollars of insurance on my body or any part of my body for that matter. Does that make me any less valuable? This woman has just went on TikTok to tell her story. Hey, how you doing? So, hmm, here today about this latest lawsuit with the P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puffy, Sean Puffy Combs, whatever you want to call him. So basically his last two lawsuits or last two major lawsuits, um, the one with Cassie, she made mention that Puffy made her carry his guns into nightclubs and wherever they went. And he threatened her to make her feel like she had to do so. And of while there were lots of things of importance, that stood out to me. And I'm going to tell you why. In this lawsuit with the producer, Little Rod, they were both essayed by him and threatened and physically harmed. But in this lawsuit, he appears to be a very young producer to me. But he said something very specific. As a means of threatening him, Puffy said, that's why I shot up the club in New York back in 1999 and let Shine take the fall for it. Let me tell you why that's of utmost importance to me. Because I am the woman who he shot in the face. I literally have told everyone and never changed what I said. I watched him. I got pow pow in the face. I watched him fire the gun. I've said it all this time. Even the surgeon who did my surgery to take out part of the bullet fragments that was aspirating into my lungs and try to remove as many bullet fragments as possible testified in the criminal trial that while they were putting me under, I was screaming, puffy, pew, pew, me in the face. He testified in the criminal trial. It is in the record. They all knew he did it. Everybody knew he did it. But he paid off the club bouncer named Sharice and all these other people and the club owners with their video to hide the video. That's his M.O. I told everybody that. This man almost took my life, has traumatized my life, has caused undue harm, irreparable damage to my life lied his behind off. Regardless of this woman's testimony, Puffy would claim time and time again to not have a gun. And I'm trying to make it clear to you. I want to say to, to you all face to face, I had nothing to do with a shooting that night in the nightclub. While it seems typical and simple, there was definitely an evil behind it. Combs, his bodyguard, and the driver are all charged. It hasn't been determined who had possession of the gun, but his lawyer says the car is registered to Puff Daddy's record company. Puffy was making a play with his powerful lawyers that someone shot a gun, yes, but it was one gun, and this gun wasn't mine. So, it must have been Shine's. I feel like you felt like the other lawyers was like, Yo, my guy ain't do it. Maybe that guy did it. That's that's the word on the street. That's 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 absolutely what it was, you know. And and, and you know, Puff apologized. He did apologize to me for that, you know, when we met in Paris. And you know, he did say, you know, he could have handled it better, but he was under a lot of pressure, you know, from the lawyers, you know, to throw me under the bus. Uh, and, and that's exactly what you know, Benjamin Brothman. Uh, and, and, and Johnny Cochran and, and the entire uh, dream team, that was their position. Puffy had a direct line to them boys. Kanye tried to tell us. Puff did everything because they let him know. Either all y'all going or one of y'all gotta go. But as far as Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these niggas, all you fake hard niggas, f you. Wait, Come, wait, no, no, hold on, hold on. Okay. All you fake hard niggas, you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'll get fuck who, cause you can't shoot nobody anyway. And the reason why you got talks cause you did a deal, you fed. You know what I'm saying? That's why you gotta come at me, cause part of the deal for you to be a do all that. Rah, 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 rah. So Puffy knew someone had to take the fall. 
Shine never went the snitch route and served his time. Now, did Shine actually recover? Yes, but he pretty much turned wine from water. Today's actually my grandmother's birthday who passed away. October 6th was a very special day. October 6th. That's right. Yeah. Was she, so she- Shine would go on to do his time at Clinton Correctional Facility and then was deported in 2009 to his home country, Belize. He can't get into certain countries like the UK to this day, but did become Belize's music and goodwill ambassador as well as an Israelite. As far as what happened to his rap career, well, he went from this. I'm out, bro. Before he snitched, dog, I switched lines and lines faster than I switched cars. To this. He does not place him serving jail time on Brother Love, but rather him protecting his own life. Yeah. Did you feel as if you were in fear for your life or was you protecting your friends? I was I was in fear for my life. What would make and you was, think, in top of the world, you in there with Pop, yeah, because, you in there because with Scar, Listen, no, no, no. Scar, Scar, who was the instigator, I know Scar from Brooklyn. Those, those, those are my guys. I didn't really have a problem with him. But here's where you see the association is what got him. That wasn't my beef. That was, that was Puff's issue. They had a problem with Puff. But when they started arguing with Puff, I know what these Brooklyn guys are capable of. I know what Scar is capable of. I knew what Nino was capable the of. Allegations against John Diddy Combs, a music producer, is accusing hip hop mogul of assaulting him and forcing him to have sex with prostitutes. The most recent one to take a fall just from association. Man, this one is an embarrassing one, man. Meet Mill. In a lawsuit filed by producer Rodney Jones, he stated that Diddy bragged about sexual encounters with Meek Mill. If you look to the complaint here, there's a few Easter eggs here where it says the rapper redacted on Mr. Combs' yacht consorting with underage girls uh, and sex workers. And you look down to the redaction, it says, well, the person is a Philly rapper who dated uh, Nicki Minaj. I think that may be Meek Mills. You could look at this as Diddy maybe saying this to Rodney Jones, who coerced him into doing his bid. But what added some flavor to the sandwich is the net pulled up all these videos of Diddy and Meek, like this video. Diddy acting real weird around Meek, while Meek was obviously uncomfortable. King son, man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. Now, my favorite one has to be this one right here, where you pretty much see a spirit in Diddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that definitely looks like a demon to me. Nikki has always alluded to something being strange about Meek Mills. I think she's trying to say he was putting the branch under the nose. Do you think it's a lot of undercover brothers in the industry? <laughs> uh, oh no, Queen. We don't know nothing about undercovers. I don't know. We don't know about that. Okay. Uh, Cause I do. But what made everything worse is how Meek responded. Look at his interaction with academics who did nothing but what the internet does, which is troll public figures after they get embarrassed because somebody's got to do it. He goes off academics. Didn't I tell you to stop playing with my name? I don't know what I'm gonna do when I actually see you. Get me his Addy. I'm gonna shoot a full production music video in front of his house. Seriously, give me that one in New Jersey. Academics response, cut this bunny hopping, fake gangsta shit out. <laughs> hey. Huh? Keep going. Keep going. 
Now this next one might be the most embarrassing. I'm not even gonna lie. This, they called this guy a power bottom. In late 2023, a popular religious figure has caught a bit of flack for what may be some heinous activities for a bishop pastor to be accused of. Rumors begin to fly about T.D. Jakes attending Hollywood parties, AKA Diddy parties, and having sexual intercourse with other men while leading one of the biggest mega churches in America after a content creator, Tough TV, released this information, T.D. Jakes began to deny these rumors and even went to the point of striking any YouTube page that spoke on this manner, including my page. These sexual workers said that Jakes was referred to as a power bottom. And all of this came from being an associate for Brother Love. There's no civil lawsuit out there like people said, not as this recording of this video. But there's one thing he'll never ever recover from. As of now, if you want to laugh on YouTube or TikTok, just play this video. Swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? So far since singer Cassie filed her lawsuit, there's been four lawsuits being filed that can only lead to more to come in the future. And this is not counting the fact that Diddy is now open to some false claims. This video here went viral. Hey, thanks for agreeing to do this interview. I know it's a really tough time for you right now, but we really appreciate your time. Let's do it. You know, Puff, P Diddy, how do you want me to refer to you? You can call me Love. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room, all the allegations. Are you attracted to men or women? It depends on my mood, my vibe. The problem with that is, this is fake. Is it true that you've had sexual relations with Meek Mill? I can't tell you that. <laughs> Whatever the case, it seems to not only be a rough year for Diddy, but anyone else who had an association with him. Now there's people that I could have put on this list, but there was other factors other than their association with Diddy, such as Biggie Smalls. If you remember, Lugs rushing, run bussing, concussions, catch cases. Biggie Smalls went to Los Angeles and did this. Bus, you just move with such stamina. Slugs missed ya. I ain't mad at ya. I ain't mad at ya. And yes, this was just months after Tupac died. So I can't put that all on the association with Diddy. But one thing's for sure, there's more people that's probably gonna be added to this list because we're already talking about Chris Brown. And also says an R&B singer redacted in Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home, consorting with underage girls and sex worker. When you go down to the redaction, it says he's a Grammy Award winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bayesian billionaire. I don't know who's a billionaire from Barbados that we know that dated someone. That sounds like Chris Brown. So and while Usher has also been named, he's been free of taking any kind of fall because this allegedly might have happened while he was underage. My brother right here from day one, we used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's how, I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying, but it's my brother for real, we used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the Frosted Flakes because he used to always get up early with me, and now he's one of the richest stars in the world, and I'm yo. Like, what, what the fuck did Puff just- So ain't nobody touching that one and I'm not touching that one either. But who else could it be? Yo, okay, so check this out. It's me, Tyrese, Ray J, and- But you let me know in the comment section who else you think should be on this list of people that took a fall just from an association with Diddy. Well, anyways, you know how we like to end our videos over here at Moxie Approved, right? With that water. I see y'all here next time on Moxie Approved.